One of the things from an electronics perspective, that if you have not been living in a cave somewhere, <clears throat> is that our electronic devices are becoming increasingly complex. And while most of us are familiar with the complexity from the software perspective of GUIs and all these layers of, of software uh, that exist on top of a piece of hardware, uh, the prime was a good example. Jim showed us how, how a simple uh, power supply of an HP35 compared to prime. There are four, <laughs> four, four uh, DC to DC converters in a calculator. And uh, the idea that you could do that 10 or 15 years ago was just unheard of because the, the efficiency was just not there to, to just say, oh, give me any voltage and I'll make it any voltage I want wherever I want it. And it's going to be, you know, 85, 90% efficient and then it's going to work. So power is everything. And um, see if I can. Uh -huh. Is there a switch here? No, no. Blow the button. This is the little There we go. Oh, okay. You have to press the right button. So, one of the basic issues, if you've got a dead calculator and you press the button and nothing happens, the sway doesn't turn on and and you say, oh, my, my calculator has died. Well, that may be the case, but there are a few things you can do to know that is true or not. And one of them is to make the basic measurements of the, of the power supply, power source. So why do we make these measurements? Well, first of all, we might want to determine, assuming it's working, of course, the maximum, minimum, average uh, current rate. How many microamps or how many milliamps of current is the calculator drawing? From that, you can determine the power that the calculator is using when it's operating. And of course, uh, knowing side information, you can uh, determine it's within manufacturer specification if you know that, if somebody can give it to you. So what do we measure? We measure uh, DC voltages, DC currents, resistances, perhaps temperature, and we do all of the above over time. Now that's the whole point of my talk today. And, and I call this, uh, uh, and I'll get back to that in a minute. The instruments that are typically used to do this are uh, digital multimeters, DMM, with any accessories, oscilloscopes, which are not really essential. You don't have to go and buy an oscilloscope, you just totally fix your calculator. Hmm? And uh, maybe uh, specialized uh, devices, uh, USB devices. Now, just for convenience, this is not very accurate. I just want to put things in perspective, and I'm going to call volt ohmmeters or digital multimeters, I'm going to put them into three generations. The first one here might be the analog generation, and that ran generally from the 40s into the 50s. And many of you old timers will recognize some of the old analog meters. A uh, generation two would be uh, the following when meters, analog meters requires a very sensitive magnetic movement and that's expensive and that's, unless you're doing it in high volume, it's, it's price too high. So digital multimeters quickly took over and analog meters have died. In fact, if you wanted to buy an analog meter, uh, prices you know, uh, came down and now they're going back up because the volumes have gone almost to nothing. And I saw this meter and I thought, oh my gosh, this is a perfect device to measure calculators. 
And so I'm going to call the motion meter this little device here generation three. Now, if you were to go over the history of uh, digital multimeters, you might put another generation or two in there uh, based on, on how you define your generation. The motion meter. No controls, no display, and no indicators. Well, there is one. Can you see a little blinking orange LED there? Yeah. Yeah. That's all you got. <laughs> That's all you have. And believe me, you think the calculator is hard to troubleshoot, can you imagine troubleshooting this? At least you've got an LCD display in your calculator that is on or not, or blinking or you know, displaying something uh, unusual. When you order your multimeter, send in your $125, you get a case like this, and you get a little piece of paper. I didn't bring that little piece of paper, did I? No, I didn't bring that little piece of paper. The little piece of paper says, plug in two of your probes and hold the two probes together. Now to me, that's a terrible thing to have to do. Most people don't think anything of it. The only analog day you want to measure resistance you hold the probe together, and you adjust the zero of the meter, and then you use it. Well, that's a two-handed operation. Now, the motion meter is actually a Kickstarter project, and it was started by this guy here, James Wong, and um, I wrote an article about the motion meter, I don't remember, I think it's like 23 pages worth of stuff, on um, exploring the, multi, uh, the, the motion meter. And I may be mispronouncing this because somebody told me that whenever you have a device that measures something uh, um, over time, I guess, like an odometer, it's not an odometer, it's an odometer. So this may be motionometer. 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 So I, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it. But from my article, I, I extracted this section, which gives a little history of, of the motion meter and, and how it came about. So this is indeed a new, totally new thing. Inside the carrying case, uh, there's our motion meter. There are three test probes, and there's uh, three adapters. The adapters slip over the, the, the points of the test probe and it gives you alligator clips. No operator's manual. Yeah. Looks pretty useless so far. <laughs> What's the motion? Oh, well, kid's up. mother's dog. Um, the most major advantages. First of all, it has a lower voltage burden. Now, if you've ever experimented, and maybe Jim will have some comments about playing with this, if you, if you put, try to put a meter in series with a power supply, a calculator is connected to a power supply, and you put your meter in series with it, you will find that the meter screws up the calculator. And the reason for that is that the calculator is drawing so little current that, that the meter is upsetting it. And that's electrically specified and that's 20 microvolts per milliamp or the inserted resistance of the meter is 0 0.002 ohms and the meter itself is lower power it's higher resolution it's 24 bits which is one part 16.7 million or 0.1 parts per million your normal multimeter digital multimeter won't give you that kind of a resolution the motion meter is a data recorder and it records the data on a micro SIM card. The same card probably that Joseph used uh, on his uh, copter. Do you mean micro SD card? Yes. yes. Data micro recorder. Micro SD card. I said corrected. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's not the same card. It's a lower cost. Um, 
And why it has nothing here is that the display and a lot of other stuff was put into your cell phone, which is a common trend for a lot of uh, what would normally be expensive instruments. They're cutting the price down saying, well, the engineer already has that in his cell phone. So it gives you Bluetooth and higher resolution screen and a built-in plotting capability. You can take this out, bury it you know, under some leaves and put your little sensor out there and take measurements in the field. You want to sample it every minute, sample it every day, whatever you want to do. You can then record that, come back six months and get your data. Here's an overview. I won't go into all the electronic street, but it has you know voltage input over here. Uh, it has a current input over here. This is your common, and it has uh, an auxiliary input, which is kind of a uh, a low a low scale of the uh, uh, current voltage and resistance over here. And this is a kind of a detailed range of specs. The manual you have to download off the internet. Like you have to download the app into your phone to make the motion meter work. Now, there are eight parameters that the motion meter will measure. It'll measure voltage, AC and DC, there's two. Current, AC and DC, there's three. Resistance, four a low voltage by uh, a diode voltage uh, six and uh, six, eight. Uh, there's temperature and time. Now the meter doesn't measure time, it does measure temperature. Uh, this is a circuit board that you can see, it's got a clear case, there's the board. And I've identified two particular devices here and here. Um, uh, the input is through a 32-bit, 24-bit, low-power analog front end for a portable electrocardiogram. Now, you may or may not know, but when you're doing an electrocardiogram, the signals are very, very low voltage signals. So it takes a lot of gain, a lot of uh, quality amplification, so the signals and noise ratio has to be kept high. And so this meter is not based on any IC design intended for an instrument. And then it has the communications uh, for Bluetooth. Now, I mentioned that I didn't like a two-handed hold the probes together. So I put together a, uh, took a piece of plastic, uh, plexiglass, I, I, I glued three switches on there. I, I took four uh, banana plugs, unscrewed the insulator, uh, screwed the, uh, the piece into it so that uh, the three quarter inch centers here, 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 and here, uh, I could just plug this in. Yeah. And there it is. Uh, I added my own little extra probes here. And the reason for the switches um, is to, in one position, it, it switch, it, it short circuits the input, so I don't have to hold my probes together. The problem with holding the probes together is that you you don't make a good connection. So you're moving around, and the, the values are moving around, what have you. And the way I set up, and, and all the schematics and stuff are all included in the paper which is on the thumb right. The other position is a center each side switch is to uh, 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 allow you to uh, uh, remove a signal because when you have two signals and you don't know which is which, you can flip a switch and one goes away and the other so you, so you can figure out what, what signal is where. It's only a convenience kind of thing. Now here's an example of um, a temperature uh, time plot. One of the issues 
with this instrument is because it has such a high resolution. It's giving you all kinds of digits. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's overload in, in, in data. And you can see here that we're going from 26.450 degrees up to 26.513 degrees. That's the resolution for you. And of course, if you're measuring to that resolution, any instability, any changes, you're going to see. And so this plot is almost meaningless to you because it's, it's just so... And the time, we're looking here at 0 seconds, 0 0.5, 1, 1.5. So in a half a second, we've got to 1, 2, 3, 4, oh yeah, what was it, 10 or 12 changes in half a second of temperature. But we're able to capture that. What were you measuring, Richard? Pardon? What were you measuring? Oh, in this case, uh, there's a built-in sensor I measure from here for convenience. What? If you wanted to measure the, the, temp the temperature, temperature of what? Of this. Oh, of itself? Yes. Uh. Because that's the quick and easy way to get my plot. That's all. If I wanted to measure, I would use a, uh, a thermocouple and plug it into two things and, and do it that way. Okay, here's an example of a, uh, a voltage plot. Um, and and, and, and uh, you notice there's three test leads here, so you can measure voltage and current simultaneously. And one of these could represent voltage, the other current. You run that into a spreadsheet, and then you do the instantaneous uh, computation for power, and you can get power consumed over time. Okay. Ah. Did I miss something? No. Oh, okay. I thought I had a slide in there, but I got into more, more of the, uh, the overall circuit efforts. So the motion meter is about the price of a quality digital multimeter. It's $120. Now, you can get digital multimeters from $0 into the $10 range on the low end. Now, where, where can you get one for $0? Arbor Freight. Arbor Freight, yes. <laughs> the motion meter is especially suitable for calculator measurements because of its low burden. Which, uh, presently, I would guess at this time, based on the last time I checked on the progress of sales, the initial bill from the Kickstarter, I think, was 2,000 units. And so I think the first batch is almost sold out. So if, if this design catches on and people are starting to use it, then it could actually get into a real world product. The documentation is minimal. There's a lot of documentation out there, but there's not, and there's, there's, there's a lot of videos. Everybody loves video. Today the world going crazy. Everything's not video. You want to fry an egg, we're going to show you a video. So uh, you can get quite a bit, but the, the part that I didn't have time to get fully into, because it's one of the reasons, not only was time, is that the limited information and, and exactly how it's going to play out is not clear, and that is how to uh, data record and process. It's good you run the data from your SIM card, uh, transfer it to your computer, and then run it run a spreadsheet on it, but somebody's uh, the software is like Prime, always under development. The motion meter is powerful, but has a steep learning curve. The wireless data logging has lots of field applications, and based on their specifications, you can go out and bury this in the leaves and take your your field data recording for at least six months. And there's two AA batteries in there. And uh, the circuit loading is very low, and that's what's important. Now, what I had planned to do was to measure prime, and because I could data record over, say, a two-second period, I could actually turn the meter on, see the display come up, do a problem and see all of this in real time in terms of what the power is. 
And we often talk about the calculator going into high and low power modes, but it does these things so fast that we don't know. And this may be the last ability we have simply because the integrated circuits are doing this so fast that we, we, we can never know exactly what the power is at any given time under any given conditions. But the motion meter will give us a much better, faster look at it. Questions? What is its frequency response if you're concerned about changes in the uh, If you look at their specs, it's one kilohertz. Not very high. From my experience with a function generator, it's you see the idea is that you can take two data, you can measure uh, power factor, power, you can measure uh, distortion. There's a lot of things you can do, but it's not a fast. It's an electrocardiogram. You know, we're talking four or five hertz. You know, it's just uh, um, not a, a high speed device. Any other questions? Yeah, you said the software is being updated. Is that the app that's being updated or the firmware? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I open it and it says waiting. I checked Bluetooth on my phone, it's turned on. Uh, when I was sitting over there trying to play with it, get it to, get it to communicate so I could show you real time, uh, I, I went into the settings and it says Bluetooth. <laughs> you know, so I, yeah, but I mean, it says. Uh, does that have any kind of port on it for updating? Flashing memory, you know. I mean, I, I think what I think what well, you're. No, I think answer answer your answered question the question. No, the I app. think he did. I think it may down, it may update the firmware through the download. The update is on your phone. Oh, so you're thinking through Bluetooth it would upgrade yeah. the firmware? Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, I mean, if there's a glitch in the box, uh. it's done. Yeah. Right. See, you strip out all uh, everything and you replace it with a right. communication link, and you put everything over here. Okay. And, and you cut down the price. Because if you were to go out and look at the functionality of this into an instrument, oh, you're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Did it come with the probes, the leads? Yes. Yeah. It comes with everything in here. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Any other questions? What have you measured? Have you measured anything with it? I have. Um, my article, which is on your thumb drive, one of the first things I did um, was to compare against my voltage standards. I have three uh, standards for AC and DC voltages and currents. I have a, I have a, a very high accuracy, one milliamp a current source, um, uh, and all the details are in the article on the thumb drive. And I compared it against my standards, and boy, it was uh, their spec is less than one percent. So if I have a meter that's 0.1% and I take all my measurements, I can pretty much guarantee that they're plus or minus 1%. And that was my goal. Now this doesn't quite reach that, but it does reach a comfortable 1%. And when you get into that level, you're, you're, you're doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. Any other questions? Under a motion meter cheat sheet. Oh, thank you.